to another video. This is some motivation for young Christians. Welcome back. Welcome back. Today we're going to be learning about finances. Here we have a special guest. We have Brother Frederick here to educate us on finances. Brother Frederick, please introduce yourself by stating your name, your profession, how long you've been doing your profession, and the church you currently attend. My name is Frederick Tiles. I am an accountant. Um, I have been in the industry since 1999. I've been in the industry since 99, right? Church I currently attend is um, Church City in Jamaica, New York. That's where I'm at. Thank you so much for that introduction. But the fact that been in the profession before I was even born. So it's <laughs> been a long time. I think That's for sure. 22 years to be exact. 22 years. <laughs> Heard I'm, that. Not, I'm 17 going on 18. So he's about four or five years ahead of me. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> that's, that's very okay. All was, good. All it good. Makes, it just makes him very qualified for his position. <laughs> and, and, and slightly older. It's all sure good, though. Either way. <laughs> so good. So good. This is part one of the video, guys. We have five questions. Next week, we're going into the other five questions in part two video, guys. So let's get straight into the question. Our first question for today is, how do I decide what our needs versus wants? Um, that's 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 gonna be easy, easy to easy to describe, hard to do, right? Uh, so what you need, right? If we're really honest, what you need: shelter, food, clothes. Obviously, God. That's really it. Everything outside of that is a want. A car. We live in New York City, right? A car is not necessarily a need; it's a want. Right. A certain type of clothing, a certain type of shoe, a certain type of food. Those are wants. The need is those basic things. Food, shelter. Right. Oh, obviously, water, air. Right. We, we need those things. Water, air. We need God. We need the Lord. Right. But in terms of need, that's what we need. Everything, a lot of times what we do is we, we, we pack on wants, right? And in order to keep the wants around, they get translated into a need. They're not really needs, so though. They're just, they're just wants that we probably shouldn't have gotten right now if they're that much of a burden. Thank you so much for that response. And we always have to decide what our needs versus wants because it helps us to better spend. Because you get what you need and then pitch any want here and there. Uh, one of my mentors always tell me this with a paycheck, just make sure you try to take out a little bit and use that for a want. And then the rest need and then save it. So always try to treat yourself, but don't go overboard. Because you, you know your budget, you know what you can spend. I just, Interesting. I Interesting. Every, every everybody's gonna be a little different. Um because when 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 you when you kind of track the, the stories, many, many of the stories, not all of them, many of the stories of the affluent, right, in this country, um, especially the ones that didn't start out affluent, right? Like their family didn't have anything. They kind of started out at, you know, started at the bottom and then they kind of worked their way up. When you read a lot of their stories and hear a lot of their stories, what you find is wants didn't come to far later. They were able to discipline themselves, right? And not to say somebody that has a want is not self-disciplined, I'm not saying that, but they were able to discipline themselves to the point where they delayed all of that because there was a there was a bigger purpose. There was a bigger mission ahead of them, right? And then when they got to a position where there was some level of financial comfort, then they started adding their their wants. I have a, I have a, a a a a mentor. One of my mentors is a millionaire, and to this day, he very rarely gets anything he wants. Because he's one of those people that started at the bottom. Not that he's a meager, not that he's cheap. He has a few toys, a few, but nothing compared to people, other people with his money. Nothing compared. He still lives a rather um, humble, I wouldn't even say meager. He still leads a rather humble lifestyle to the point if I, if I introduced somebody to him and I said, hey, this is the millionaire, one of the millionaire guys I was telling you about, they'd say, there's no way there's this guy. So everybody, everybody's, everybody's kind of their 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 journey is going to be different when it comes to that. You know what I mean? Everybody's journey is going to be great. Mess and just a last point. Uh, later in my life, uh, my goal is to have money 
and don't look like I have money. So I still just want to be regular and just don't do all the expenses of chains and all that. Uh, I'm not really too much interested in that. I, I just I just like doing regular stuff, wearing regular clothes. I'm not into all the design and stuff like that. So my goal is to look like I don't have money, but have money. So that's, that's my goal. Now we're moving on into the second question for today. Our second question is, why should a person spend less than their earning and save the difference? Well, I mean, here's the thing. Definitely want to spend less than you earn, right? Because if you spend more than you earn, you're not gonna have any money. That's that's I mean, that's basic math. If I if, if you have ten dollars, you can't spend fifteen, right? And if you had the ability to spend fifteen because there was some level of credit, right? You still only got ten dollars. You have ten dollars, right? You don't want to spend fifteen, but you definitely want to save. I, I I'm not a, opposed to saving, but here's what I'm opposed to. I'm opposed to only saving, right? Because in this in this environment that we live in, everything is everything is inflated in price, right? So, um, think about think about it like this for the for the viewers that you know you guys knew what a loaf of bread cost ten years ago, right? A loaf of bread costs, say like on average, it costs like a dollar seventy five ten years ago. And I'm just kind of throwing a number out because I don't remember what it cost either, right? But that same well, it's not even the same loaf of bread; it's the same style of bread. The companies are actually giving you slightly less bread. Most people don't realize it though, right? Because when when you looked at the weight of the of the bread ten years ago and you looked at the weight now, the weight of this bread is less. The package is not, is nicer because they make you think you're getting more, but you're actually getting slightly less because they're cutting the slices slightly thinner. So so sl it's so slight that most people don't notice it by the naked eye, right? And now they're charging you more. So what does that mean? I'm getting less and it's costing me more. Well, another if we're all here for another 10 years, the same thing, another five to 10 years, the same thing is going to happen. So what am I saying? I'm saying if you only save your money, your money is no good save. You only save money for a rainy day. You have to, have to invest your money, right? Um, and this is something crazy because, I mean, in the book of Genesis, right? And some people don't see it like this, but in the book of Genesis, we, we read about the Garden of Eden. Right. And, and God tells Adam, he tells him a certain thing. He says, listen, I need you to tend to the garden, tend to the garden. What does that mean? He's like tend to the garden basically means you need to stop anything that's in the garden. That's going to stop these trees, these trees that produce fruit from growing. That's number one. You need to stop that. That's what 10 means. Right. And then number two to 10, the other side of 10 is you need to do something that continues the growth. I already, I already got a system set up to continue growth. What's the system? Well, you know what? Go pick one of those apples or pick an orange out the tree. When you peel it or you bite it into it, you cut it open, these things have seeds in them, right? So God designed this garden with fruit, but not just fruit on trees. He designed it to reproduce itself if mankind did the right thing. And that is what? Take those seeds, put the seeds in the ground, which means get it out of your hands and put it somewhere else where you can't touch it and allow the natural process of at that time, what we call nature, allow the natural process of nature to cause not only a tree to grow, but a tree with fruit. Not only a tree with fruit, but the tree grows, the fruit grows, and there's more seeds to continue to reproduce over and over and over again. That's the basic plan of investment. The idea is, is to not just save it, to get the money out of your hands and put it in the ground and put it into something, deposit it into something that will allow it to reproduce. See, because when the money is in your pocket, the money is in your, under your mattress, the money is somewhere on you, it's out of the soil. It can't grow. Just like a seed. A seed that's not in the soil is good for nothing. It can't grow. It can't. It, there's... The purpose of seed is for it to sprout open and reproduce something greater than the seed itself, right? So that's the thing with investment. Yeah, we want to spend less, not just to save, but we want to spend less so we can save and invest so we don't have to deal with when we, when we get older in life, right? Whatever older is, whether older is 20, 30, 40, 50 or above, whatever that is, we don't have to continue to work so hard 
for money. We can learn the idea is not to work hard for money because anybody can make money. The idea, the, 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 the skill is learning how to grow money, right? Because anybody can make money. You can go get a job and make some money. Anybody can make money, right? It's not hard. Very few people, less people can save money, but even fewer people know how to grow money. And that's the key. The key to being comfortable. I'm not even talking about wealthy right now. I'm just talking about being financially comfortable is the ability to grow your money. You only grow your money through investment. Amen. Amen. I definitely must agree with that. It's good to save your money, but you also have to put your money in some place to, for it to grow. And with me right now, I'm continuously learning about investing through YouTube, through my mentors, because um, right now I'm in the saving part. I'm in the saving um part. So that way, when I'm at the point where I start investing, I got some money put up that I can put towards that. Now we're getting into the third question for today. Why should a person track their expenses and start a budget? Oh, you track your expenses to make sure you, so you know where everything is going, right? You when you don't track something, somebody could be stealing from you and you never know it, right? You could be cheating yourself and you never know it. That's why it's so important to track your expenses. Because then you'll be able to see, you know, one of the biggest things that get people, adults, right, in particular, in trouble financially is the little stuff. There's nothing huge. Yo, a $7 cup of coffee every day for five five days a week every day, $35 a week. $35 a week, do that every month. You do that every week for the month, that's a hundred minimum $140 a month. Do that every day, every work week for the year. That 140 a month, all of a sudden now, is like 1500 almost $1,600 a year in coffee, right? Take anything small. It's nothing, sometimes it's nothing huge. But then what happens, the same person sometimes says, yo, it's difficult to pay my cell phone bill. Well, dude, you just spent $1,600 in coffee. You know what I'm saying? If, if we were just reallocate some things and readjust some stuff here and there, yeah, I, I, I can I can get you another like at least another eight hundred dollars a year to pay your cell phone bill. What's your cell phone bill? Sixty five dollars a month. Yeah. Sixty five dollars a month times twelve. Yeah, that's that's about seven hundred and eighty dollars. Yeah. Just cut back on Starbucks for a minute. You know what I'm saying? I got your I got your cell phone bill money right there. You know, that's why you track your expenses, because especially like I said, when when you finding it difficult to pay something. You got to track your expenses to figure out where it's going. And I say track it for three months. Write, type, write, whatever you do. Whatever it is that you do, type or write. Track it for three months. Everything you spend. Everything. You know what? You got the little Disney Plus subscription, $12. Well, it's like, I think 13 now or something like that. Yo, write that down. Right? That's the other thing. The stuff that's getting directly debited from your account, the stuff that's hitting your credit, hitting your debit card or credit card on a regular basis. You know what I'm saying? That's the other stuff that you don't even, because you don't, you don't see it. Your money is going, you don't see it. You got a little gym membership and Planet Fitness is like $10 a month and you think everything is good. That little $10 a month, especially if you ain't going to the gym, that little $10 a month can be going to go someplace else. That's why it's important to track what's going, track what's going on. And um, Dave Ramsey said this. I, I don't even want to, I don't even want to take this and say it's mine, but it's phenomenal what he said. He says, you got to assign every dollar a, a job before you get it. You got to assign it a job because if you don't assign, if you don't want to give it an assignment, it'll do whatever it wants to do. And that's so true. So in order to give it an assignment, you got to track it. You got to create a budget and track how you spend money. That's something that I definitely started to do early. I think somewhere mid last year or later into to last year, because during the pandemic, I, I, I was spending so much money on food, clothes, just a bunch of different stuff. And I wasn't tracking my friends. I wasn't budgeting my money. Because before I used to just like spend, spend, spend. But now I track my money, I budget my money. And going back to the point by what goes according to Ramsey. If I'm uh, not, Dave Ramsey. Dave oh, Ramsey. Ramsey. Oh, they they might be related out. Yeah. Dave Ramsey. <laughs> Dave, like, no, I sign I my money each one of them a job. Okay, this go towards this, that go towards that. You right here, you say we we not touching you right now, and I'm I'm able to start doing that more so that way I can better um, organize my money. That's that makes sense. Now we're going to our fourth question for today, which is 
Why should a person save but start investing early? Oh, the earlier you invest, the more money you can make. <laughs> the earlier you invest, right? The er it's not even so much early, right? I don't want people to think, all oh, right, I'm like 15 and I'm going to start investing now. That's good. But it's, it's not just early. It's consistent and early, right? If whatever consistent is for you, if consistent is once a week to invest, if consistent is once a month, if consistent is once every three months, whatever that is, stick to it, right? Whatever it is. If it's if you say, yeah, I got ten dollars, right? And this is for a, a, a person under 18 and a person over 18, because believe it or not, most adults don't have any money invested and they have very even less saved, right? Should, should I say it like this? They have very little money saved and outside of a 401k or some kind of retirement plan at work, they have very little money, if at any at all, invested, right? And th these are adults we're talking about. So the thing is, even if you got $10 and you say, I got $10 a week that I want to invest somewhere, make sure every week that you don't slack, take your $10 and invest it in something. Whether that's crypto, whether that's the stock market, whatever that is, invested in something and consistency pays off because over time, that money will begin to generate, or at least it should be able to gener begin generate other funds on its own. And then you won't have to work so hard for money. Your money can start working hard for you. And that's the goal. So the video that came out last week, we talked about investments. So right now we have Brother Frederick that's reiterating that. Please, guys, go watch that video. It's a total of five questions. We asked an investor and he was able to educate us more. And now we have Brother Frederick who's been in the accounting business for over 20 some years and reiterating what the investor told us. So guys, please go and check out, check out that video. Learn about investment. Don't go into something that you're not knowledgeable of because you can make so much error and lose so much money with the, all the information that we have now do with social media online. Learn as much as you can, whether it's some YouTube books, so that way you know what you're getting yourself into. Now we're moving into our fifth question for today. What is the power of compound interest and how does a person use it? Ah, all right. So compound interest, right? Here's a classic. Here's a classic, right? And you probably heard this before because this, this is not brand new, but it's always effective. What, what if I told you today I'm going to give you a choice? I'm going to give you, and this is, this is not a rhetorical. I need an answer, right? What if today I told you I'm going to give you $2 million or I'm going to give you a penny today and every day after this for th the next 30 days, only for 30 days. I'm going to double what you have. So day number one, I give you a penny, right? Day number two, because you already got a penny, I give you another, I give, I double it. So I give you two, another penny. So you have two. So now day number three, because you already have two pennies, I give you four pennies, right? Day number four, you already have four pennies. I give you four more. Now at day number four, you have a whole, what? Eight cents, <laughs> right? Here's, here's my question to you. Which one do you pick? I pick the penny. And the reason why I pick the penny, the penny is doubling. Because if you do the length of 30 days, that's 30 days. You start for one penny, each day you go by, it's doubling, 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 and doubling. So by the end of 30 days, you will pass $2 million. Because I've, I've been asked for a similar question like that. And the first time I was asked, I said, I don't remember the amount of money I had, but I said the large amount of money. But then when they explained it to me, when you look at the mat by day by day, when it's doubling, you're going to be past $2 million by that 30 day. Yeah. I don't know exactly the amount you'll probably be in this. You, you, you'll have $3.3 million if you do that after 30 days. At, on day number 30, you'll have $3.3 million dollars and that story right there is the simplest way to explain compound interest because the doubling of what you have every day is compound that's the story of compound interest right compound interest may the, the interest rate may not be double every single day but that gives you an impression um the same thing when you pay a credit card bill right when somebody has a credit card bill they say oh i paid a hundred dollars the balance didn't move what happened well, <laughs> there's interest on it, right? So you, your $100 payment, maybe only $20 went to the principal, 
The other 80 went to the interest, and guess what's happening? Now they tack on more interest because there's a new billing period or a new month has come up. So now there's even more interest. So it looks like your $100 payment, it almost at the end of that month looks like you didn't make a payment at all. You know what I'm saying? That's the that's the ability of compound interest. That's the power of it. But so either compound interest works against you, like I just said about that credit card, or you learn how to grow money and use compound interest to your advantage. So it either kills you or it makes you better. One of the two. You decide how you work it. But this entire this entire nation surrounds if you're using credit. It's you're getting hit with compound interest, right? If you're trying to grow your money, the biggest factor of growth to anyone's money is compound interest. It's not savings, right? Because they don't give you enough interest in savings. And it, it, even though it's compound, it's it's compound at the at the smallest level possible, right? It's like spitting at a fire. You might get one spot, little a little sizzle in one spot, but the fire is continuing to grow. So you can't spit fast enough to put the fire out. So you got to get something what more powerful to put the fire out, right? Your spit can do it for a little. Or go, you go get a cup of water and you douse it. You douse the fire with a cup of water. Yeah, that little area that you douse will probably go out, but the fire is still spreading. You still have a problem. So, like I said, compound interest either it either works to your demise or it works to your benefit. But it all depends on how well educated you are in terms of finances to make the compound interest work for you or allow it to work against you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. So much for that response. This was it for the video, guys. Thank you guys so much for coming back and watching these videos, guys. Thank you so much for Brother Frederick to be able to educate you guys on the topic of finances. Next week, part two will be dropping with the other five of the questions that we have. So if you haven't already, like, subscribe if you're new, please turn on your post notification. That way, anytime I upload, you do, we'll send you a notification. And this is Motivation for Young Christian. I'll see you guys next week in part two. <laughs>